Hi and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to take you on um, one of my creative journeys and show you how I produced this painting um, starting with a sketch that I did way back in I think um, the spring um, as part of my seven day sketching challenge. I'll try to remember to leave a link to that, um, that episode of the Sketching Challenge series in the description below. And so what I'm going to do is show you how I um, sort of work from the sketch in order to create this painting. I often get asked um, how I go about doing that and whether I just sort of literally scale up the sketch or that sort of thing. And... The answer to that is no, I don't really scale it up. The sketch is like a sort of exploring a theme, if you see what I mean. And this beautiful scene here of um, um, the Irish landscape from the area known as the Ring of Kerry, um, I've been exploring this particular photograph, which I found on Pixabay, and I shall leave the link to the photograph in the description as well. And so... When I work from a photograph, I try to really simplify it down. And this is the result of the simplification sketch that I did in this really small, I think it's an A6 sketchbook on day two of my sketching challenge. Now, what I've got here is the bare bones of my painting. I've got my rough colour scheme. I've got the atmosphere that I want to create, the placement of my main items on the page and just the, the more or less the kind of feel or expressive atmosphere that I want to create. In other words, a small sketch like this will explore various themes that I'm interested in pursuing a bit further in um, a larger, more finished painting. Um, some ideas I will take, some ideas I won't take if I like them less. For example, um, this is a pure watercolour and I will be doing my painting um, in the line and wash style because that's the style that I'm currently uh, really enjoying working in. And there's quite a bit of sort of etching through the damp paint with a palette knife. And I won't be doing any of that in this painting. I'll be letting the paint and the ink speak for itself. But this sketch is my fact finding mission. I've discovered um, a composition that I think works. I might make some minor tweaks, add a second tree to the left just to balance things up and a few more sort of hints of trees on the right just to flesh out the uh, composition a little bit more and keep it really focused on the still water um, and the mountains in the distance. So here is my line work. Um, I sketched it out in pencil first and then went in with waterproof fine liners. I like Faber-Castell artist pit pens if I'm using fine liners and Pigma Microns are pretty good. But I also sometimes use stick pens, but I didn't use them for this. Um, I used the fine liners uh, just because they were what was to hand. And the idea here with the line work here is to create the outline uh, but also to put in or establish the tones in various ways. The three main tones have been established here by leaving the white of the paper for my lightest lights. Um, my darkest darks have been produced by the shading and the outline with my waterproof fine liners. And the paint will come in and there'll be a few sort of slightly darker lights and my, li my mid-tones all created using the paint. I'm painting on Saunders Waterford cold press watercolour paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. It's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres, um, so a quarter imperial sheet. The board's at an angle of about 20 degrees um, and that will help gravity um, gravity will help me with the painting because I'm going to be painting the sky wet in wet to start with. And that will involve me um, wetting the sky and most of the lake or lock and the um, land with a large wash brush. And then I'll be painting the sky using um, raw sienna and Payne's grey and that will continue down into the water and then the land 
will be painted with perylene green, sap green and burnt umber and raw sienna. So that's just about it for the first layer, the wet in wet wash. And so the sky is completely painted just with two colours, Payne's Grey and Raw Sienna, and then various mixes of 
sap green, perylene green, raw sienna, Payne's grey and a bit of burnt umber in the foreground. Um, this is all blending wet in wet on the page. Gravity is all helping it all to diffuse. I now need to leave it to dry completely. And here it is, it's dried back really nicely. I'm very, very happy with that and happy with the structure that my line work has uh, maintained on this lovely soft background wash. Now I need to use smaller brushes and start painting in some detail um, of sort of to suggest the leaves, the foliage and the cones on these pine trees and a little more detail in the land. I'm painting these um, using the wet on dry technique uh, so that most of my edges will be much harder and that will bring these details to the fore a lot more. I can soften back with the brush if I need to to create some soft edges as well. But here I'm looking to bring the painting together with just enough detail so that hopefully it'll come together and then we can take a look at it and see um, what sort of um, relationship there is between the finished painting and the sketch.
Well, I think that's just about enough detail. Um, I think I'm quite happy with the with how loose it looks. Maybe a little slightly darker in places. Um, now that that perylene green started sort of drying back a bit, so darken up around the base of the tops of the trees just to bring them into shadow a little bit more. Um, and then I think I can remove the tape from the painting and have a look and see how it looks with a clean, clean white border. And then we will take a look at it and see um, how it relates to the previous sketch. But just before we look at the sketch again, um, I think it just needs a little bit more of a sort of grassy texture around the base of this tree. Uh, when you remove the tape, you can see it with fresh eyes and you can often see a few minor adjustments that need to be done uh, before the painting's completely finished. So how does the painting relate to the sketch? Well, here's the little sketch. You can see it's much smaller, but I think you'll agree it's pretty close. You can see that the explorations that I made in uh, the sketch have directly translated across in terms of atmosphere um, to the larger painting, but also in terms of composition, um, the composition that I explored in the sketch directly correlates to the composition that I have worked with here in the finished painting, uh, but it's much more detailed and nuanced, as you would expect. I think if I'd come straight in and tried to paint this straight away as a painting without the sketch, it would have ended up looking a bit more like the sketch. And I think that's the point. The sketch is the exploration. It's such an important part of painting. Um, so I would encourage you to um, include sketching and exploring your theme um, as a part of your uh, creative practice. Uh, it helps you to iron out any sort of difficulties with the composition or with colours, because what works in your mind, what you think it's going to look like, might not necessarily be how it looks on the page. And you can make all those discoveries um, in a watercolour sketch and then move forward and create a much more refined painting. Well, I hope that's been helpful and I hope that's answered a few questions about how a sketch relates to a final painting. Um, if you do have any questions, please put them in the comments below um, and let me know what you think and whether you use sketching as an important part of your watercolour practice. Um, I'd love to know what you think. If you are interested, there will be a copy of the um, fine liner line work the reference photograph and the finished painting on Patreon for you to refer to. Um, so if you're interested in signing up to Patreon and supporting the channel, please follow the link below. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. Uh, please follow the links below to support Morgana or myself and the channel. Thanks so much. Take care and happy painting. Bye.